I guess the main piece of work that we've done recently, which contributed to this, was that we've, um, for, for almost two decades now, we've been monitoring the, um, the terrestrial ecosystems, the moss beds down in Antarctica, um, and looking to see if they've changed. And we started doing this because um, I've been working down there since 1996, but every time we used to go down to the station, um, all the other people on the station, the tradespeople and everyone else that lived on, on the stations, the Antarctic stations, they all used to say, so, so is it changing? What's happening to these ecosystems? Are they, are they changing? And because we had no monitoring system, we actually couldn't tell them because we didn't know what it had been like um, 20 years before or whatever. And so in, in um, 2000, the year 2000, we actually set up a long-term monitoring system for the first time and marked marked places that we've been back every tried to go back every five years to uh, to monitor and in two, 2017 um sorry in 2018 we published that paper which was the first um basically the first 15 years of that survey so we did a pilot in 2000 we started the the um, long-term monitoring in 2003 and then we tried we went back in 2008 um, and, and then um, most up until 2013, at least 2013, 14. Um, so we published, published that study and that was the first study really to show that a terrestrial ecosystem in Antarctica has changed because of climate change. And so what we can tell from that is that these ecosystems that are in this place at the bottom of the earth, you know, there's um, miles away from anyone, but the climate change that's happening across the globe is affecting them in Antarctica and, and causing them um, to dry out. And that's um, that was the first indication that there was actually a terrestrial ecosystem that was changing. So um, on the continent as a whole. So up until then, we thought that most of the change was actually happening on the Antarctic Peninsula because that was the area of the planet that's been warming the most rapidly. Um, I, I was really, I, I was basically a plant physiologist, so I was interested in how were the plants coping with these stresses, but that's led me to um, these bigger pictures in terms of, you know, we think of ozone depletion as just it, it added UV, but actually it's affecting all these other things in the climate. And so like greenhouse gases, you know, we're messing around with the whole of the whole globe's climate by making these changes, whether it's the ozone depletion or whether it's greenhouse gases, you know, they have far reaching implications for, as we've seen recently in terms of extreme events like the fires that you get or the, um, or the heat waves. So those extreme events and those changes to wind patterns and changes to circulation patterns around the globe um, are probably some of the most profound effects. You know, it's not just the sort of steady warming that we get with climate change. It's do we actually get, you know, people talk about tipping points. Do we get things where it actually shifts to a different system? And that can be very profoundly different for both humans and for um, animals and plants on the globe.